Was the peaceful transfer of power in January something of a miracle? And will it be repeated? Let me explain why I'm asking. The deterioration of democracy is a daily story in America. Look at this Politico headline from the other day uh, about just how conspiratorial Trump world has become. The headline says, a fear grows in Trump world. Have we gone too conspiratorial? Interesting question, because on the very same day, Tucker Carlson dropped this promo for Patriot Purge. <laughs> it's a streaming service series that goes full 1-6 denialism, at least according to the trailer. So riot denialism, election denialism, it is all of a piece. And some writers and anchors are trying to expose that, trying to expose those who are subverting democracy. This new commentary at Salon.com says Donald Trump's slow motion coup is becoming a runaway train. But I have to tell you something. There are journalists at other outlets, outside CNN, who see what's happening, who see the conspiracy storm clouds forming, who see the election subversion efforts intensifying. And they don't feel like they can say so. They feel constrained. I've had about a half dozen conversations with A-list journalists about this in the past month. They tell me in private that their news outlets are struggling over how to cover this daily assault on democracy, this drip, drip, drip. Well, one way to do it is by mapping out the road ahead. So let's take a look at the stops along the way, because so much of what might happen in the next three years is sadly predictable. Imagine it's 2022. Right-wing media keeps pummeling President Biden, weakening him, calling him a tyrant one minute and senile the next. Donald Trump is in complete control of the GOP, and his entire political existence is premised on the big lie. He launches his own version of Twitter, and he streams a talk show on the web. And it doesn't get as many viewers as Fox, but it sets the agenda on the hard right. And the agenda is revenge, taking back what he says was stolen. The big lie as rallying cry supplies years worth of content for MAGA media. And establishment GOP figures have to play along in order to keep their jobs. Trumpers like Sean Hannity are enforcers, attacking dissenters for daring to stray. Some have to leave the party. Trump continues to traverse the country, holding rallies under the banner of Save America, meaning America is under such dire threat that it needs to be saved from Democrats. These rallies are live on Newsmax and OAN, and they are streamed all over the place. And to quote Save America, red states continue to place new restrictions on voting rights, with local radio hosts and commentators providing all the rhetorical cover that's needed. The savvy ones say it's about voter integrity. The cruder ones say it's about making sure real Americans are heard and illegals are not. Even when Republicans are charged with illegal voting, even when it's the Republicans doing it, they claim Democrats are the real criminals. In the right's media echo chamber, growing ever more extreme, the words Democrats and criminals are conflated constantly. So the other side loses legitimacy bit by bit by bit. The GOP media is on board with this. They're on board with a power grab at all costs, driven by fear of a changing country. Fear propelled by the likes of Tucker Carlson and Laura Ingram, who bring up things like caravans right at key moments during the election. And all of this in 2022 helps the GOP regain control of the House. Members of the January 6th Sedition Caucus are now in control of the body that completes the Electoral College process. Now, some Democrats fret about what's going to happen in 2024. They worry if the insurrectionists will have the upper hand next time. But remember, in Trump world, up is down and day is night. And Trump keeps saying the insurrection was Biden's election. His propaganda machine so thoroughly rewrites the story of January 6th that most Trump fans now say the riot was legitimate. It was a virtuous attempt to right a wrong. The felonies, the brutal injuries, the suicides have been written out of the story. The rioters have been turned into the victims. And most people, by the end of 2022, have a sinking feeling that more riots are ahead. Now imagine it's 2023. Trump officially announces he is running again. He faces some younger challengers, but it is still his party, partly because he's great for right-wing ratings and clicks. He has convinced his base that he is the only one who can restore them to power. When critics deride the Trump cult, his superfans embrace that word. They start printing cult t-shirts. Some guzzle red Kool-Aid at rallies to troll the libs. 
New fan groups organized in private Facebook groups. They call themselves the Trumpets. They pledge to share only real news about the candidate to get around the CNNs of the world. Of course, their real news is largely misinformation. Meanwhile, key local election boards are being reshaped in Trump's favor, and the MAGA media machine gins up even more hatred against secretaries of state and other local officials who don't pledge allegiance to Trump. Intimidation is one of the key weapons. Cars, buses, boats, all wielded in menacing ways. But when reporters cover these episodes, pro-Trump Twitter stars say, hey, liberals try to threaten us too, so we're just getting even. There's always an excuse provided for undemocratic behavior. What aboutism is the name of the game? Conservative publishing houses churn out shelves full of books with justifications for every illiberal instinct. And religious broadcasters blast out daily prophecies about Trump being God's vessel against demonic Democrats. The average New York Times reader almost never sees any of this, but it's out there every single day. Remember, it's 2023 now, okay? GOP primary season. Columnists who point out that Trump is a wannabe autocrat are insulted by Fox stars, triggering hate campaigns against them. Reporters who try to counter Trump's lies are jeered and smeared more than ever before. His verbal attacks against the media are so pervasive now that physical violence erupts more often. Beatings at rallies, bombs at newsrooms. The bombs don't explode, but that's beside the point. Fear is the point. Silence through force. Let's continue down the road a little further. Imagine it's 2024 now. Trump is the GOP nominee. He's feeding off Biden's missteps in a foreign crisis. His big lie from 2020 has become absolute accepted truth in his party. There's a clear difference between the people who pay for news, who subscribe to news sources and want to know what is true, versus people who pay for views, incendiary views, what they want to be true. And that's what MAGA media is all about, incendiary views. There's a market for this. It's a giant grift. Even more Save America websites start launching to sell affirmation and merch to the faithful. These sites don't gather news. They spin the news in Trump's favor. They start to publish explicit enemies lists. And in the comments section of the websites, people dream up what they'll do if Trump is denied power, which weapons they'll use, who they'll hurt. At far-right conferences, people ask, when do we get to use the guns? And how many elections are they going to steal before we kill these people? Americans are at each other's throats, spun up by the sick stuff they see on social media. Every day, some random hyperlocal story about a migrant from Haiti or a refugee from Afghanistan is blown out of proportion into some doomsday international story about the death of white America's way of life. This is all you hear about on right-wing radio and on Rumble. They are killing us. That's the general election narrative. And this stuff trickles down, destroying civil discourse, even on the local level. Neighbors turn on neighbors. Normally easygoing local elections turn into existential battles. It feels like there's Republican diners and Democrat diners, Republican bars and Democrat bars. Common ground erodes, largely because there's no common media ground anymore. It's as if America has been swallowed up by QAnon conspiracy theories. Freedom of expression feels trampled, muffled. And remember, as all of this is happening, as democracy deteriorates in 2024, Trump's enablers claim they are the ones protecting democracy. They think, or at least they pretend, that they are upholding the Declaration of Independence. They cloak their autocratic actions in the language of the Founding Fathers. They claim to be the most patriotic Americans of them all. And this narrative is advanced 24 hours a day by the ABC, the apps, the broadcasters, and the commentators who justify stomping all over the Constitution as an attempt to save it. Now imagine it's Election Day, 2024. Trump is the leader of a new lost cause movement. Every single voice on Fox has his back. But outlets like OAN still call Fox liberal, commie, pinko, whatever it takes to steal viewers away from the top channel. And Fox responds by running even further to the right, quadrupling down on red meat opinion over news. There will be no repeat of the Arizona race call. Telling the truth is too risky. The GOPers who used to be responsible party officials are cowering to Trump. Key election boards are, to borrow rigged, a borrow word, rigged. The country is on pins and needles. Landlords board up downtown windows. Maybe looting starts, shooting starts. I'm not saying that all of this will happen, but I'm saying it could. 
we know it could happen because it has all happened before. Almost everything I have described has already happened in one form or another. Books like Peril have all the evidence. And the next big book about Trump and election subversion is Betrayal. It's by ABC's Jonathan Carl. It comes out in November. And it has even more evidence of Trump betraying democracy. Carl writes in his final chapter that America came so close to the edge last winter, closer than most Americans appreciate. I just want to read to you one line from what Carl says. He says, quote, I didn't realize it at the time, but as I reported on this book, I became convinced that the peaceful transfer of power that happened as scheduled on January 20th was something of a miracle. We know what Trump will do. So what will the rest of us do? That's the story for the American media.